Now, in case of water or all these little substances, the word pressure acquires very, very interesting meanings. And in order to understand that, let's perform some interesting games. Let's play, let's play a few games with water and let's see what happens. Let's take a large little, large tub of water. Large little would be pretty oxymoronic. So let's take a large tub of water, pretty wide. And let's try and do one thing first. Let's make a little, fill it with water fully. Let's make a little hole in the side, right? At the topmost point where the water is. The water is gently dribbling down. Yeah, very, very soft, very, very smooth. Then you make a hole a little below, it starts coming out slightly, right? And then you begin to make a hole somewhat even more below in that, in that vessel. Of course, plugging the top vessels just to make it easier. It starts flowing out even more. If I were to make a hole pretty much at the bottom, it flows out a good amount of velocity. The water is squirting out, right? Interesting. So what's really happening here? So when you have water and you have weight of that water, all the weight's gonna be pushing down on the bottom layers of water. So if you have one layer of water, the layer below it is holding the weight of the layer on top. The layer below that is holding the weight of two layers on top. The layer below that is holding the weight of three layers on top and so on and so on and so forth. So take the bottommost layer, it's kind of, the molecules of water there are actually like workers holding up an entire group of layers and layers of other workers. Let's call them water. So if you were to think of it as workers holding each other up, because this is what honeybees do, yeah, when, when you watch honeybees building their comb, the honeycomb, one of them goes and attaches, each one goes and attaches himself or herself behind it. And the topmost bee is actually holding all the bees weight below. So you invert the whole thing. And if you were to imagine it, right, the bottommost layer of workers are holding 10 or 15 layers above them. One layer above, a little lesser, one layer above, a little lesser. You can also imagine this as the human pyramids that we form. Yeah, the top, bottommost pyramid has, layer of the pyramid has to be very strong, right? And the next one, because they're holding the entire other layers on top, the next one, little less, next one, little less. So if you were to imagine it, the pressure that the bottommost layer feels is very large because for their area, the entire, a large amount of weight is on them and so on and so forth. So a liquid is kind of like a large number of weight being supported by the bottommost layer and lesser and lesser as you go to the top, which also explains why when we cut the water out, when you make a little hole, the pressure is reflected in the amount of velocity with which the water comes out. This also shows the pressure, pressure is not just vertical, it's also acting horizontally. You make a hole, it comes out horizontally. So pressure is acting in both horizontal and vertical direction. What about upwards? What's going to happen? Let's take a liquid, the same liquid, and immerse like something like a beaker or, or a nice big glass into it. And just so that the water doesn't enter the glass, so the glass is like half immersed inside. And let's try and make a hole at the bottom of the glass. What's going to happen? the water is going to start squirting upwards inside that glass. So the deeper and deeper you take this glass, in other words, the larger and larger you make it, and then you make a hole, the more and more force which the water comes out. It's pretty much like creating a fountain out of nowhere, right? You're using the fact that the water has pressure to create a fountain. Interesting. So what have you observed till now? Liquids have pressure. And the deeper and deeper and deeper you go, the larger and larger the pressure becomes. And that pressure acts in all particular directions, all possible directions. You take a point in water somewhere, at that point, it feels a pressure from every known direction, which is why if you allow one of them to escape, it starts escaping in any possible direction. Even if you attach a straw at a random angle, water is going to start squirting out of the straw at that particular angle. Whew. A new concept called pressure, a new concept called thrust. A lot of intuition we've built in, right, about liquids, because liquids are significantly different from the way solids behave. We also saw a smooth transition between six solids to liquids. And let's see how what this means in terms of how we can start making predictions.